Hi everyone, welcome back to our ongoing series on how to build a life operating system in Notion. Today is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be an update. I'm going to share with you a modification to my task database that I've made. And I wanted to get this video established in the series here now, because when we move on to the project database, this change will have an important ramification. So I've made this modification to help manage projects from the project database view. Previously, we did a video on the task database and also the daily action zone where I primarily interact with the task database. Today, I'm going to introduce that change I've made that will have a minor tweak in terms of how I interact with the task database directly and the daily action zone, but it'll have a more significant impact when looking at projects from the project database point of view. So diving in, just a quick modification to the system. Going forward, this will be how the system works. Fundamentally, what we're adding here is a status field to tasks in the task database. Okay, so this is the command center dashboard that starts everything. We'll dive into the action zone, which is where we look at daily activities, what we're doing hour to hour. Previously, we did an entire video on this. If you're coming new to the series, I recommend you jump back to that video prior to this one. And we open up the today view and we see what we saw before. However, there's a new field, the status field. And then jumping even further, just clicking through the calendar, we see the actual action items database. And we looked at this in a whole video previously. So again, if you're new to this, go back to that video to start. This is a follow-up to that video. We have a new field called status here. And what status does is let us choose whether we want that task to be active, waiting, meaning waiting on someone else to complete something before we can move forward on it. So that waiting tag is replacing the waiting checkbox I used to have. We could have the checkbox instead of this, but this lets us consolidate into one field instead of having two fields. So waiting designates that the ball is in someone else's court on a particular task that we can't move forward until they complete their part. And we're just waiting for their completion and then we'll pick it back up and move back to active once they've finished their part. Pause means we've started it, but for whatever reason, we need to pause it. So it might just be that you got too much going on. You had some extra things pile up you didn't expect. You got to pause something that you had previously already started. Next up means we haven't started it and it's the next thing in the queue to get into. And future is the queue beyond next up. So really next up and future are both in the queue in the future. This designation between the two just lets us sort a little bit and identify the ones that are closest among all the future items to coming online. But if we started it and then stop it, then it's paused. So that's a little bit different than never having started it. The vast majority of things in here are active. Now we have a few things I'm waiting on other people or waiting to hear back from someone. So they're on waiting mode and I'll show you how that shows up in the daily action zone in a moment. And then at the bottom, we have some things that I'm starting to work with from the project view in the project database. And I wanted to line up some tasks to come, but I didn't want them diving into fully fledged active tasks that I'm managing and assigning due dates to. But they also didn't necessarily sequentially follow another one, so it wasn't really a dependent task. It's just when I set up a project, I wanna think about all the tasks that that project might involve and list everything I can think of at the outset and be able to designate them as next up or future, even though they're not active. And that reduces the number of tasks that I have to manage with due dates. Again, I use DO dates, the date I plan to do the item. It minimizes an overabundance of due date management and only has things only for the next week or two that I'm actively engaged in and prioritizing on a day-to-day -day basis. So it just gives us a little more flexibility to add more without flooding the system and flooding what we're managing and prioritizing over the next week or two. Now, you might actually have a much longer list than this. This view is filtered by a private checkbox is not checked. So I have a lot more items in here. It's actually a much bigger database of, of active and various status items. But since some of them are private, I'm doing these public demonstrations, I will just, things that are really private, I'll just check them as private and filter for that so I can show you the database and all the ones that are not private will come through. So back to the action zone, where I primarily interact with the task database. Looking at today, we've got the new status field here. Everything that I'm interacting with is going to be active. So the filter is now filtering for status is active. Not waiting, not pause, not next up, not future, but only active. When I'm looking at tomorrow, once again, only active. When we look at the upcoming week, only active. So if everything's filtered for only active, why am I even displaying this in the list? Well, so I can change the active status if I need to. If something gets handed off to somebody else, I can 
switch it to waiting and it disappears from here and it shows up in the waiting on view. Now I just moved this item that has today's due date. I just switched that tag to waiting. So that moved down here. Now that's not actually a waiting item. So I'm gonna move that back to active. But now the waiting on view is no longer filtered by the checkbox waiting. It is filtered by the status setting of waiting, but it works exactly the same as before. Same logic, same functionality. Instead of checkbox, we're just doing the waiting status designation. We also have the dependent actions. We did a whole video on how to do dependent tasks. If you haven't seen that video, go there before watching this. This isn't part won't make sense to you if you don't know how we do dependent tasks. But if you do know how we do dependent tasks, this is not filtered by status at all. The dependent tasks view is filtered entirely by whether there's anything in the following field. So the following field designates that, that this task is following another task. It's a dependent task. So regardless of the, what we set the status to, it will show up here as long as it's following something. It doesn't really matter what we set it to because again, it's gonna show up here regardless. But what I do is I consider this active. If it is set up as a dependent task and it's going to go through the, the normal process and protocol of following another task, once that other task is completed, this one moves into the online position, then it is active. It's queued up and ready to go and operating under the normal protocol of our system. So it's active. It doesn't need to be put on any special designation. If you wanted to bring that clarity that it was a dependent task, you could have a, another tag here called dependent and you could do that. The only reason I don't do it is, is because that means to bring it online, it's one more field I have to adjust. And so I wanna adjust the minimum number of fields to bring it online as an action item that's no longer dependent and gets its own due date. So to bring one of these online, we would assign a due date and a priority, but I wouldn't have to touch the status because again, my protocol is to leave it active. So when we come down to the calendar view, everything's the same as before. Doesn't really make a difference. We're filtering the calendar view so that only active items are shown. However, we have added a new view called the non-active review. So during your weekly review, you will now take a look at this and, make, and see if there's anything here that needs to be turned into the active status. The other time you would consider making something active is when you're looking from the project view in the project database, that's when you're sorting the various activities and tasks to fulfill that project. And you'll be prioritizing sorting and bringing online as active tasks from that view. But also from your weekly review, you'll consider this just to make sure nothing falls through the cracks, which is one of the reasons the weekly review is so important. So in this non-active review, we are filtering that the status is not active. So it's the reverse of all the other views and that the status is not waiting. Because if it's waiting, we've got a separate view to keep an eye on and that's also checked during the weekly review. So everything but active and waiting are shown here. And importantly, they are sorted first by status and second by project. So in most cases, when it's queued up to come in later, it's because it's part of a project and you have other tasks from that project that are active. These aren't really gonna come online until later in the project. In most cases, in my usage, there is a project assigned when it has a non-active status, but that doesn't have to be the case. But I sort them by what's coming up next, paused is first, next up is next, and then further down the line, future is, next, is after that. And I just have them nice and organized here and they're associated with these various projects. If you wanna go through and look at them in the project view, very easy. Just open that project view. This is a demo project. We're going to do a whole video on this very soon. And in here we can see all the action items in that project. Let's open it up. All the action items in that project sorted and prioritized by status. And those that are active have due dates. Those that are not active don't have due dates. There's no need, they're not active. Once they come online as an active task, then they get a due date. Everything that's active either has a due date, a DO date, or is dependent on another active item with a due date. So going back, that's pretty much all there is to it. And there you have it, that's the new field in the task database. I've been doing this for a long time with clients for business implementation. So this has been a standard part of my company or business enterprise application of the system. And it just occurred to me, this would still be valuable on a smaller level for an individual. I brought it into my system. I've been testing it out. I really like it. It gives a little bit more flexibility to load things that you want to get to someday as tasks, but not have them overwhelming the, the due date active tasks in the database. So we'll continue with lots more on the whole life operating system using the Notion platform. If this is of interest, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get updates on future videos. Leave thoughts or questions below and hit like if you found this valuable. 
I also write a newsletter called Mind and Machine on increasing human capability. I give away several of my best Notion templates to anyone who subscribes to the newsletter. You can, of course, unsubscribe at any time, but I hope you'll give it a chance. I work super hard to pack it with a lot of valuable insight. The newsletter link is also below in the show notes. Thanks for watching. Lots more to come.